First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmit it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmit it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. All right. Hopefully y'all can hear me clear. Tonight's discussion is going to be on herbs and their healing power. There's a lot of information in which that we definitely want to go into. Number one is the science of thought. Whenever you're dealing with the power of the mind, that has to be number one. Because the mind is what makes everything real or appears to be real. All right? It's the miniature matrix. It's the universe in miniature or microcosmic form. All right? So, we know that the universe, according to the proper sentences, nation God's nerve, that expands 76 quintillion miles in diameter. But the mind has the ability to scan the equal amount, which is the universe itself. So uh, when it comes to the science of healing, the power of the mind is actually number one. So we have to correct our mind. Now, how we do that? We do positive affirmations. All right? Positive affirmations are what's called hakao or what's called hesi. It's what we have to learn how to master the sounds of power. Right? This is why it says in the book of John that the word was God, the word was flesh, um, um, the word became God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh. All right? In other words, it's through the power of words in which that brings forth manifestation upon planet Earth. So if you call the thing into existence, it comes by way of the thought in which that you resonate or the frequency in which that you um, have put forth. Now, there's different, there's seven different levels of consciousness. Now, you have interpersonal consciousness, intrapersonal consciousness, life consciousness, which is oftentimes called just consciousness. Then you have subconsciousness, super consciousness, magnetic consciousness, and infinite consciousness. Now, your breath 
This is where the science of breath comes in at. When it plays into the power of the mind, because the breath taps into each of those particular seven levels of consciousness. By slowing down your breath, by deepening and lengthening your breath, you tap into a different level of consciousness. All right, for example, interpersonal consciousness. The average person breathes 18 breaths a minute. Next is intrapersonal consciousness. The person breathes about nine breaths a minute. Life consciousness. 7.5 breaths a minute. Self-consciousness, 6 breaths a minute. Super-consciousness, 4.5 breaths a minute. Magnetic consciousness, 3 breaths a minute. Infinite consciousness, 1 breath a minute. So, if you learn those particular sciences, you can tap into any of those levels of consciousness. Now, we talked about magnetic consciousness which would have been three breaths a minute, or is three breaths a minute. Now, at that level, you are able to attract and bring everything that you want into it. This, this is the actual science of the law of attraction. This is what the secret did not teach you. Nothing in there in the, um, um, in the secret had anything to do with the science of breath and how it taps into the different levels of consciousness. So it's missing things. And that part in which that is missing is what I'm telling you right now. That in order to attract and draw what you want into your life, you must slow down your breath to three breaths a minute. That is simply 10 seconds in, 10 seconds out, 10 seconds in, 10 seconds out, 10 seconds in, 10 seconds out. That's 60 seconds, which is one minute, three breaths. A breath is inhalation and exhalation. That's one breath. Inhalation, exhalation, two breaths. Inhalation, exhalation, three breaths. Ten seconds apiece, which is 60 seconds, which is one minute. All right? That is for those who are able to visualize and to imagine what you want. And that's how you do it. All right, once again, um, the science um, of the secret did not teach this. This is the reason why um, those who uh, might have seen it, you might have tried some of the techniques, but it did not work, is because you have to first embed the frequency. So this is what you have to know. So first is the power of the mind. And there's two aspects of the mind, the lower mind and the higher mind. When I talk about the power of the mind, I'm talking about the higher mind, which correlates to the neocortex and the frontal lobe area of the brain, which is called the neo-mammal brain. All right? That's the section that we're talking about here. A portion of the 90% of the brain that scientists say that we do not use. Scientists say that we only use about 10%. In the movie Limitless, they moved it up to 20%, but I doubt that very likely based on the dumbing down of America. I can't see um, using 20% of the brain based on the level of consciousness that we are resonating at right now in society, based on the programming, based on um, TV, based on the radio, based on um, the indoctrination of the school system, the educational system, I doubt it very likely. But the 90% that you do not use goes into the dark matter or the black energy, which is the science of melody. In the book of Isaiah, it speaks about God dwells within darkness and that he would bestow darkness as the treasure of punishment. In other words, being able to tap into that 90%. Right? And that's how you do it. When you go into infinite consciousness, you tap into that. That's when you unify with God or bliss or nirvana. Why they say with Shiva or Buddha or Christ or Krishna. 
or Melchizedek, all of his same thing. I mean, this is what you tap into at these particular levels of consciousness. Now, so the power of the mind, the science of breath. Next, you have the science of water. Right? These are the most important things. Right? We know the water as the alkaline, as the 7.4 pH balance and above. You want to get rid of bacteria and viruses, parasites, and worms from out of the system. So that becomes necessary, the proper water. With the proper water comes forth the alkaline food. The highest alkaline foods are lemons and limes, watermelon, papaya, mangoes, coconuts, etc. All right? Part of that food branch is herbs. All right? Herbs. Of course, we know that Monsanto, with the terminated seed, is trying its best to control the seed market and control um, the plant life, in particular vegetables and fruits. However, um, very unlikely would it go into controlling the weed aspect, such as dandelion, alfalfa, red clover, you know, and etc. These are herbs in which that um, has the tendency and the ability and capability to cure um, cancer. You build blood cells, all right, and purify your system. Now, when you get into the science of the herbs, you have to think about probably the best herb I can think of is basically red pepper or what is known as cayenne pepper. I can think. Now, when cayenne pepper is mixed with other herbs, uh, it carries the minerals very quickly to the other parts of the body where they are most needed, and it increases their, their um, effectiveness. So if there's any herb that's that you take with cayenne pepper, um, should be definitely added to the mix, all right? It can be um, put directly on the cut to stop the bleeding, of course. It can also be used for internal bleeding or ulceration, um, such as within the stomach. You know, there's other uses, basically, is um, everything. Some arthritis, rheumatism, um, strokes, prevent strokes, heart attacks, blood pressure, low blood pressure, remove mucus from the um Lung, so bronchitis, asthma, and improve the circulation, helps with um, cramps and um, controls and um, helps cure diabetes. It helps with digestion, um, digestive um, issues. It helps with um, giving your body the energy in which that it needs, especially when taking with bee pollen or ginseng, right? Um, it helps with the, um, healing up the heart, helps the um Remove infections, plus with the regulation of your kidneys. You know, it does so many things. You know, it helps remove tooth. Right, so cayenne pepper is real good with uh, red clover. Right, red clover is um, also another excellent herb. Right, now, you look at red clover, red clover is a blood purifier. It's a blood purifier. And it's matter of fact, it's so good that um, it's actually enough to apply and it benefits actually the whole system. You know, it's good for um, cancer, especially when you mix red clover with yellow dock. Remove cancer. All right? It helps with your nerves, skin disease, as well as you know, bronchitis and void. You know, so red clover is excellent in order to um, utilize in that regard. Right now, when we're talking about yellow dock, yellow dock is also another excellent antibiotic, natural antibiotic within the uh, plant kingdom. All right? It's one of the best blood purifiers. 
and cleans the lymphatic system and tones the entire system, right? It's real good um, for endurance, liver congestion. As we were saying earlier, you know, help with um, destroying cancer cells, mental fatigue, skin problems, sores, spleen, swelling, and vertigo. Also, so yellow dock is excellent. Um, as an antibiotic, it's one of the more powerful antibiotics in the kingdom. The most powerful antibiotic is golden syrup. If there's a disease or ailment on that you do not know where it's coming from or what's the cause, golden syrup is the herb in order to use. All right, golden syrup, excellent. Like I said, it's actually the penicillin of the herb kingdom. It's an excellent cure-all that invigorates the strength of the body, all right? So it's real good for burns and chicken pox, the children, childhood, mumps and measles, helps prevent those, the circulation, diabetes, digestion, your eyes. Matter of fact, you can make it into a tincture or into um, a matite and actually put it within your eyes and use it with eye bright, all right, or bilberry and actually heal um, cataracts and glaucoma, all right? Um, it's good for inflammation, um, menstruation. If the woman menstruation has been too long, it helps um, cut down on the number of days, all right? So it does cayenne pepper. So you can actually add cayenne pepper and golden seal together in order to get um, the best results for that. Um, morning sickness. Um, you can use it as a mouthwash, all right, um, skin cancer, ringworm, you know, it's excellent um, for those types of things. So once again, um, if there's any disease or ailment in which that you do not know um, why you have, have it. Golden seal is the earth to use. You can't use golden seal too long. It's best to use it for two weeks and then a week off and then two weeks and a week off. Always get that um a type of herb like this, a break, but it's like an it acts as an antibiotic, all right? Now, we may mention of another herb, which is called um, eyebright, in which that is real good, and bilberry. Now, eyebright, when you get into it, is real, real good for the eyes, of course, to brighten up the eyes, as it even says, but um, it also stimulates um, the liver and cleanse the blood. All right, so it also um, affects clarity of the vision, and as well as also your thoughts. So it's good for information, it's good for the liver, stimulation, liver stimulation. All right, um, also all eye ailments, eyebright is excellent for as a blood cleanser. It also is good for diabetes. So eyebright is excellent. Um, as we said, with golden seal. And this one is also with bilberry. You can actually mix those two together or make it into a tea in order to um, help with um, any eye problems whatsoever. All right? Bilberry is like blueberries. It's like um, part of the um, blueberry uh, family. And um, you would use um, the leaves um, of the bilberry. And um, it's excellent as far as helping with any eye problems, as we were saying. Now, another powerful antibiotic in which that works good with golden seal is chaparral. Matter of fact, it's one of the best herbal antibiotics in the herbal kingdom. All right, it destroys bacteria, viruses, parasites, burns, internally and externally. All right, I mean, this thing is so powerful, it's good for leukemia, um, AIDS. You know, it's real good for um, tooth decay and chicken pox and cancer and um, dangerous. Um, gum disease, venereal diseases, um, urinary tract infections, um, warts, whiteheads, blackheads, any skin problems whatsoever, you know, um, oils, um, bruises, you know, um, bronchitis, as we were saying earlier, real excellent. Um, basically what it does, it removes mucus from the lungs, so that's why it makes it so good, as well as also rashes, so any problems, all right, even flea bites. All right. Um, it also helps and adds longevity um, to your lifespan. So, um, chaparral and golden seal 
are two of the best antibiotics. Another one in which that it ranks right up there with it is actually um, garlic. All right, I know. Yeah, I know. Something as simple as that, garlic. You know, garlic is one of the um, most powerful um, herbs also. It detoxifies and it rejuvenates all parts of the body. It's effective against bacteria, which may be resistant to other antibiotics, you know, but you combine golden seal, chaparral, and garlic together with yellow dock, you're knocking something out. All right? You're knocking it out. Any contagious disease, parasites, worms, yeast infections, um, bad cholesterol, uh, cancer, high blood pressure, you know, all of that is, is being knocked out. Even um, antibiotics, and that destroy um, good cells. I'm in the mix, you know. Um, it destroys even antibiotics, all right, and was that you might get from the doctor or clinic or hospital or whatever. All right, so these are the better or the best antibiotic um, herbs to use, all right, instead of using um, the ones from the hospital or clinic or doctor, you would want to use these natural ones in which that helps um, with your body system because it's natural, right? Those are processed or chemically made antibiotics, all right? So um, you definitely want to use those. Now, when it comes to um, intelligence of the brain, like you're talking about opening and activating more than just embracing your brain, there's herbs that you can use in order to help you do that. Um, you have ginkgo. Ginkgo biloba, in which that increases oxygen and blood flow to the brain and to the lungs. It helps to deal, you know, um, the body to deal with stressful situations. Um, it helps with all time and um, your attention span. So, um, ADHD, D, um, circulation, um, dizziness, um, hearing loss, impotency, memory, strokes, stress. You know, so um, ginkgo biloba works real well in conjunction with ginseng. All right, ginseng, of course, contains the male and female hormones, and is also real good to eliminate um, inflammation, and it strengthens and tones the stomach. Now, you know, ginseng, of course, has been used by the, um, in the Orient for years for the science of longevity, you know, the capability of uh, making a person help, you know, to live long. So longevity, impotency, um, your prostate gland and your uterus for the woman, um, the aging spot and digestive system um, is real good, as well as also for the brain. So ginseng, ego balaba, works real well together, along with um, guatacola, all right, along with guatacola. Now, guatacola is real powerful, all right. Um, it's, it's used for many um, memory problems. It can be used daily to increase potential memory you know, um, you know, either at school or either at work, it doesn't matter. You know, it can also be used, you know, um, for um, age problems relating to um, the military or old timers, as they said nowadays. All right, it's been used for um, energy, epilepsy, uh, blood pressure, inflammation, learning abilities, the memory, as we said earlier, stress, schizophrenia, you know, as well as also mental fatigue, as well as also the nerves. So. Um, those three herbs work real well together um, to open and help activate more than just 10% usage of the brain, all right? Along with alkaline water, it helps open. Remember, your brain is 90% water, 90%. So you must have the right water in your body, all right? Your body overall is 75% water, all right? Your bones are 22 to 25% water, all right? Um your spine is 85% water. So, I mean, water is necessary, especially the correct water. All right? And so that's what we're talking about is the correct water. All right? Along with these herbs, help solidify um, our alkaline system to help um, eliminate a lot of the elements and sicknesses in which that um, actually are going on. All right? Now, I would think that some of the other herbs in which that is real good, you know, for like particularly 
your endocrine gland. We just finished talking about the brain, so those herbs also help. That we just spoke about the brain, help the thymoid, um, the hypothalamus gland, the thalamus gland, the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, help to decalcify um, that particular gland in order to give you more contact or unification with the spiritual world, which is um, the ionic sphere where the answer goes to after um, death or what appears to be death. Actually, there's life after life. Um, then, of course, you have your thyroid gland, which is the next herb down, which is located within the dural area, which is real good, um, used by kelp. All right, kelp is excellent. Kelp maintains um, more vitamins and minerals than any other food outside of Corella, all right, because it has a high um, iodine content, it normalizes the thyroid gland and it helps regulate the metabolism. So it helps the brain function normally, as well as also helps to eliminate fat uh, from the body. All right, it helps with the adrenal gland, the pituitary gland also, you know. So um, it helps with the hair, nails, you know, um, constipation, et cetera. So it is real good. All right, um, that's one of the better herbs for the thyroid and the parathyroid gland, uh, which is part of your endocrine gland system. All right, um, another herb is corella. All right, um, corella is excellent in order to be utilized as one of the superfoods. Uh, it has more protein than milk in the state, more than 50% more protein than either all um, adults, 20 to 50% more protein than a steak and a glass of milk. So, uh, for those who um, don't get enough protein, um, we want you to supplement your diet with something natural from the ocean, um, well, from the uh, fresh water, it's Corella. Matter of fact, during World War II, um, Himishima and Nagasaki, um, they had the ability in order to um, cure, all right, they actually had the ability in order to cure themselves of radiation poisoning with Corella. Okay, they actually had that ability, right? Now, that was caused with Hiroshima or Nagasaki. Um, actually, that was part of ethnic cleansing by those um, H-bombs or atomic bombs that dropped on them, all right? Hiroshima or Hiroshima, you know, was um, a remnant of those who um, followed Hiro, as well as also Nagasaki was the city of the serpent which is also part of the Uraeus or Washashet, um brotherhood or sisterhood, you know. So that means that the ancient Egyptians was also dwelling within those particular areas, you know, um, at that time, and it was part of the population control agenda um, as some of the things in which that's still going on today, all right? Now, let's go on to the next endocrine gland in which that is um, pertinent within the system is the, thy- is the thymus gland. The thymus gland sits directly above the heart in the center of the chest. What happens is that normally it becomes atrophied after puberty. It begins to shrink. And at that point um, of it shrinking, um, this is where the immune system becomes affected at because the thymus gland actually is the heartbeat for the immune system or the defense system known as your lymphatic system and your lymph nodes. All right, actually, at one time it actually used to beat just like a heart. So it actually would beat in between of the, of the heartbeat. You would hear the thymus gland actually in between that beat. This is ancient technology in which we're talking about, information in which that um, they don't teach. However, um, another science is when Dealing with the thymus gland, um, certain herbs can, which you know, also can be used. Um, alfalfa is one of the herbs in which that can be used. Alfalfa um, is one of the most powerful herbs in the herb kingdom, you know, because its roots, you know, goes about 30 feet into the ground. All right. Um, the only other, one of the only other plants in which that roots go deeper than that is probably aloe vera. You know, which is part of the aloe vera family in which that is which goes 90 feet into the ground and picks up the minerals and, um, um, and um, you know, the mineral content. Now, you know that on the surface, the top soil level um, is depleted. 
right? This has been um, stated by many doctors and scientists, you know, that the top for you um, is depleted. And what we mean by depleted, we're talking about, we're talking about, um, in particular, um, that the top for you has no minerals or lacks minerals from just 100 years ago. So the only thing that the industrial age has brought us or the technological or computer age has brought us is the erosion of the soil in which that no longer has the minerals in which that is necessary in order to heal because it's the minerals in which that acts as a catalyst for the vitamins so that the vitamins can do its job properly. If you don't have enough um, minerals, then the vitamins can't do anything. So you got vitamin E, but if you don't have selenium, it doesn't work well. Okay? So these are the things in which that you um, have to begin to do more research and study. Um, one of the um, more powerful, like we said, was alfalfa, and it contains the eight um, digestive enzymes and um, eight essential amino acids of protein. All right, so um, it's real good for promoting healing, in particular of, a, of um, tooth decay, bad breath, uh, colon disorders, diabetes, gout, indigestion, um, any problems there with the digestive system, allergies, alfalfa is excellent, along with bee pollen. Bee pollen is an energy food, and it's um, highly esteemed by many nutritionists, you know, as probably one of the perfect foods on earth. Um, that's along with Corella, so bee pollen is one of the superfoods, and alfalfa is close behind as a superfood, too, um, along with wheatgrass, all right? But um, bee pollen um, is excellent for not just allergies, but also for um, circulation and all types of digestive situation or problems. It helps heal. Um, as a matter of fact, um, bee pollen has, as a fact, this is probably better than bee pollen is, is, um, is um, populous or propolis, in which that is actually bee populous, which is real excellent also as well as um, not just raw organic honey, all right, which nowadays you have to be careful because of the terminator seeds getting into the crops and transforming, you know, crops into hybrids, you know, and that's also one of the things in which that Monsanto is doing too or trying to do. So please go get some organic seeds and start planting your crops, all right. So alfalfa, bee pollen, you know, real good. Also, along with dandelion, all right? Dandelion has all 12 nutritive muscle, blood, tissue salts, all right? One of them, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's so good. I mean, you can actually wash the leaves, the green leaves at the bottom of the dandelion during the springtime and actually wash them and actually eat them in your salad, all right? And I suggest wash them with lemon juice, you know, um, but you can actually eat them in your salad, and it has all 12 blood salts. You know, dandelion is a valuable survival food that contains the unleashed salts necessary for the body to purify the blood. All right, similar to the liver, you know, to detoxify the poisons and the, and the toxins in the liver, because the liver actually has over 500 functions in the body. You take the R off of liver, and you got the word live. So it's one of the major organs in the body in which that helps with survival, all right? Now, dandelion is also good for the kidneys, all right? It's what is also for the pancreas, all right? So when we talk about um, other um, herbs in which that is real good for the endocrine glands and the pancreas and the spleen and the adrenal glands being, um, and the kidneys being part of that scenario, um, of course, the Adrenal glands is directly on top of the kidneys, um, in which that adrenal gland excretes adrenaline. It is one of those ductless hormones glands in which that is the endocrine gland, and dandelion seems to be one of the herbs in which that helps with all of that. Pancreas um, produces or excretes 
um, insulin, all right? The spleen helps with the manufacture of the blood. So um, one of the best ones is definitely dandelion, in which it helps with the purification of the blood, all right? Dandelion, as you said, alfalfa, all right? As well as also bee pollen. Also another one is chickweed. Right, talking about chickweed. Now, chickweed um, is real good. It helps with um, all skin ailments, diseases, um, certain venereal diseases. It helps um, purify the blood. It helps get rid of um, toxins and poisons in the system. So, these four together, along with wheatgrass, can also do a lot of good in your body, within your system. All right. Now, wheatgrass is um, still said today to be one of the um, herbs for which that has a lot of chlorophyll in it. All right. Now, alfalfa has a lot of chlorophyll. All right. Now, one of the ones in which that has the most, now, the only one in which that has the most chlorophyll is corolla. And we already spoke about chlorella, but chlorella has the most chlorophyll. Every everyone else, blue and green algae, and spirulina, all of them come after chlorella as far as um as, as the amount of of chlorophyll. Now, chlorophyll and melanin are basically identical. There's only one difference, and that's magnesium. There's one magnesium molecule that is the difference between chlorophyll and melanin. Otherwise, they are identical. So that is the scientific fact. All right? So instead of magnesium, I was at the core is iron. And our magnesium has gone dormant. This is why we have to use magnesium as a secondary source. Otherwise, if our magnesium molecules was activated, guess what? If our magnesium within us was activated, then we would be also tinted green. Now, when you look at the babies, you can also see something phenomenal is that newborn, you look down near the base of their spine, near their cotyledon area, you can see a green tint. That green tint um, is a remnant of our whole body being green at one time and the magnesium molecule being activated within us. All right? It's a divine. All right? So um, Dr. York speaks about this within the Melanite Children book. Dr. Um, Debbie Blair speaks about it, as well as also um, Dr. Phil Valentine. All right? Um, you can also get this information from a book called The Greatest Story um, Ever Told. All right? The greatest story ever told. Now, there's some other herbs in which that is real beneficial. Now, there's a cancer cure in which that was put out some time ago. There's that cancer is caused by a fluke worm um, in which that can be destroyed by a mixture of black walnut, wormwood, and cloves. And I also would add to that mixed garlic, in which that kills the adults, um, the children, as well as also the infant um, eggs of the um, of these parasites and worms. Those particular four herbs. Okay? Um, of course, you can get this information in the Birth of the Gods by Dr. Paul Ghost, the Layla African's information of African um, holistic health, as well as in his book, Nutricide, as well as also in Queen of Fools. Um, I'm talking about just herbal, herbal remedy and formulas. Um, Queen of Fools' book, uh, Know Thyself, and Sacred Women. All right, so these are some good books in order to have on your shelf. All right? So what does black walnut do? Well, black walnut 
um, helps promote healing in cases of poison ivory, ringworms, and other skin disorders. It can also be used um, to restore tooth enamel. It's good for boils, uh, cold sores, lupus. With alfalfa, is also good for lupus. So you actually combine alfalfa and black walnut together in order to destroy lupus. Now, lupus is actually an um, immune deficiency in which that the cells begin to start attacking themselves. So um, black walnut and alfalfa helps that from happening. You know, it stops that black-on-black violence with the immune system. Okay? Um, of course, it's real good for parasites, syphilis, herpes, you know. Um, so black walnut in conjunction with, like you said, wormwood. Wormwood. Right, wormwood is real good. Um, good for challenges and liver problems, and nervousness and pains and worms, you know, um, heartburn and cramps, you know, headaches and migraines. So wormwood is excellent. So when they two combine, they help get rid of the worms. And worms also clothes, in which that helps kill the eggs of the parasites and worms within the system. And what is garlic, in which that helps to eliminate the worms from our system. So those four in conjunction um, is excellent in order to destroy um, candies, you know, as well as also other uh, problems in which that comes from our diet, okay? All the way from candies to cancer. So those herbs are excellent in order to use um, also, all right? Then, of course, we have... Um, herbs in which that is real good for the genital area, right? It's part of the endocrine gland, all right? We have for the male, salt pimento, you know, in which that is excellent for the prostate gland, and it has to be taken in high amounts in order to reap the benefits also, all right? Um, Damiana, in which that is one of the most safe and the most popular um, plants to store the natural and sexual capacity and function for both male and female, or man and woman. And um, so um, Damiana is excellent. It helps with any female problems, any hormonal imbalances, um, impotency, um, any problems with um, getting pregnant or what's called um, infertility. It helps also with Parkinson's disease and any sex stimulation or sex stimulant. It acts as a sex stimulant. Um, there are also prostate problems, as we said, um, high flashes. Also helps with improving up the um, energy level of the male and female. All right, so um, it works good for both male and female. Now, another herb in which that can be used by uh, mostly females is Don Huai, a Chinese herb. And Don Huai is excellent for um, menstruation. Um, issues and problems, but toning up the gastro lining, uh, as well as also for controlling the menstruation, um, the lymph menstruation, as well as also helping with the fertility and issues with the uterus, all right, or any female problem. All right, um, so... Those herbs are real good. Okay. Also, you have picium, P-Y-G-E-U-M. Picium, which is real good for the male, low with salt, pimento, and Damiana, can be used in conjunction in order to help with prostate problems and impotency. As well as um, some other herbs such as horny goat wheat, maca, M-A-C-A. Uh, those are real good, all right, um, to use. Um, in conjunction, all right? Um, for the women, like you said, major one is not quite also with red raspberry during pregnancy or right before pregnancy and after pregnancy. Rose um, red clove, um, red raspberry is one of the most excellent herbs in order to utilize, all right? Um, also, um, uva ursi is real good which is uh, one of the most reliable remedies for kidney and bladder infection. It's also excellent for diabetes, right? Um, it's real good for um, bladder stones, kidney stones, 
um, gold stones, all of these things can be removed. You know, weak kidneys, as we've been saying, um, gondolia, digestive, bedwetting, excellent for that. So that herb is real good also. Right. Um, now, let's get to the digestive system. All right. Um, also, let me add this before we go to the digestive system. Um, let's talk about specifically um, turmeric. Turmeric, which is common, or no, uh, uh, turmeric can be used. All right. There's also curry um, powder. Uh, but turmeric can be used in conjunction with red clover and yellow dock to eliminate cancer. Right, it's an excellent cancer destroyer. Now, let's get to the digestive system. I just wanted to add that herb in there because that's one of the, definitely the herb that you want to have in stock. Um, Cilium us for the digestive system is excellent. One of the best um, colon cleansers. The lubrication is more and it heals the um, intestinal tract. All right. At the same time, um, you know, if you are constipated, or if you have um, hemorrhoids or things like that, sodium husk will help eliminate that because you no longer have to strain because you have enough fiber within your system. The straining comes in a in a in a, um. I, um the hemorrhoids come because of the straining because so you are trying to get it out of you, you the, defic- um, the defecation, but you don't have enough fiber. If you had enough fiber, then it would ooze out 20 to 30 milligrams of fiber a day. All right? Some say 15 is good, but we say 20 to 30. All right? That means um, your diet has to consist of more than 50% raw vegetables and fruit. And I would suggest one cooked meal a day. All right, that's one of the better um, ways of going about this right now at this particular time. All right. Now, um, also Costa Gawa, right? Costa Gawa um, is real good and it's one of the best herbs to use for chronic constipation. Right. Um, Digestive problems, gallstones, um, liver, and the spleen. Right, the Casagara helps with all of that. One of the better um, colon or digestive herbs to use. Also, senna. Right, senna is real good. Senna um, comes from the um, it's shaped like a um, tea pod. All right, and senna is excellent in order to utilize in order to clean the digestive system. So these are the better um, herbs to use. Also, aloe vera, as we mentioned earlier, its roots goes 90, um, 90 feet into the ground, so it picks up so many minerals, you know, and it's essential. So you can actually take two small crystals of aloe vera a day in order to help with the cleansing process of your digestive system. All right, life and death begins within your digestive system. It's actually your digestive system in which they help manufacture the blood, along with the bone marrow, along with the spleen. All right? Um, these are things in which that often is not told. All right? One of the better books to get in order to understand the anatomy of the body or the anatomy of God is The Secrets of Regeneration by Hilton Otima. All right? And the ancient secrets of, um, the, ancient, um, secrets of the cosmic master. And that's also written by Hilton Otima. I think that's the name of the title. But get any of his books. He also has one called Nutrition, um, Facts of Nutrition, which that he goes into. Okay? So make sure that you um, understand um, this information. It's important. Now, let me tell you this. When you take herbs, if you are already sick, you have to take three times the amount in which that is recommended on the back of the bottle. All right, if the back of the bottle tell you two, then you should take six. If there's two twice a day, then you should take 12. 
all right, because the recommendation is for those who are simply maintaining health and who are not sick. So if you've been taking um, not enough herbs if you're still sick, your intake has to become great in order to help alkaline the system quicker, all right? Lemon juice is one of the ways in order to help alkaline the system quicker. quick. Lime juice or what is called key lime, all right, um, actually. You know, I know that lemons and limes are hybrid, but key lime. But the thing is that you can still use them in order to help alkaline. Matter of fact, lemons and limes, um, alkalinity is almost 11 uh, pH balance. So it helps alkaline quickly. Now, this correlates to the fact that first thing they do when you go to the hospital is to queue up to a saline solution um, machine. And which that is saline solution is nothing but salt water. So I know um, Batman, um, Dr. Batman from out of India, he wrote a book called Your Mini, um, your, mini your Body's Mini Cries for Water. In which he said that most of these diseases come through the fact that we're dehydrated. And that if we begin to, um, like, for example, um, for diseases such as diabetes and, and high blood pressure and so forth, so on, and begin to start taking um, water certain times of the day and add a pinch of sea salt, which is like saline solution, um, to it, um, in which that actually correlates to our blood. Our blood has a salty taste to it, right? Now, that correlates to the fact that 90% of the blood is water and actually is part of plasma, which is based upon um, plasma and the same solution is almost identical. Well, it's also ocean water. It's almost identical. Matter of fact, before transfusion for blood was used, they actually used to use Ocean water, sea salt, water. All right, this is this is history. This this is facts. You have to go back and study. Now, what happens is that um, taking two glasses of uh, sixteen to twenty-one ounces of water in the morning, um, eight ounces before you. Um, eat about an hour before you eat, 45 minutes, or 45 minutes after you eat, another glass of water, and before you go to sleep, um, two glasses of water or 16 ounces or two 21 ounces. In other words, almost a liter of water, all right? At least three hours before you go to sleep, all right? Um, that is the method in order to um, deal with the herbs. Um, of course, during that time period, you can take various teas, all right, such as green tea, which is excellent for circulation, as well as also for conditioning and toning of the body system. All right, green tea has antioxidants, which helps destroy free radicals, which become cancer in the body. All right, um, so that is also a way in order to utilize uh, the water is to make the tea and very essential. All right? Matter of fact, alkaline water is so potent that you don't even have to dip the tea bag into hot water. You can dip it into alkaline water, and actually it will um, extract the herb. All right? And you can actually drink it like that. Right, this is the um, the way in which the alkaline it shows that the way the alkaline is able to extract um, the herb is what is also the verification that is also able to extract toxins and poisons from out your system too to be eliminated through your urine. All right? So these are some of the secrets and Let me say this, there's some more herbs that we definitely want to go into, like, for example, um, some other good blood cleansers is burdock. Burdock is an excellent blood cleanser. Matter of fact, one of the most powerful blood purifiers in the herb kingdom. 
and it's real good for liver problems, lung problems, kidney problems, skin problems, swelling, urine flow, um, cleansing of the whole body, no gout. So alfalfa, burdock is real good, and, and um, chickweed is real good if a person has um, gout, all right, real good, all right. Now, you can think of some other herbs that we said is excellent in order to use um, for the body. Um, we did, or we have to give mention to your hindi. Um, your hindi can be used um, for the males in order for um to avoid or prevent impotency and to help with um, producing or reproduction, all right? Your hoodie can be used in small amounts, all right? It can be used in small amounts, all right? All right? Um, It's excellent for that. Now... Let me break down these 12 salts in which that we've been talking about. Remember we said dandelion has all 12 nutritive tissue, blood, muscle salts? Well, each one, is, there's 12 of them, each one is broken down to a zodiac sign, all right, which most people don't know. And so what happens is that, like, for example, uh, potassium phosphate is broken down to Aries. Right, so a lack of this mineral produces an imbalance in the body and affects the brain and the nerves. All right, so if a person is an Aries, he will want to make sure that he's getting the potassium and phosphate, which is necessary. And potassium and phosphate can be obtained basically by eating lettuce, cauliflower, olives, spinach, radishes, lentils, um, apples, walnuts, cabbage, and basically. Um, onions and pumpkins, pumpkin seeds particularly, and uh, cucumbers. Also, pumpkin seeds is excellent for the zinc, which is necessary for the reproductive system also. All right? You just want to throw that in there. So, um, also cucumbers and lima beans is excellent for the potassium phosphate. So, if the Aries is missing that, um, they will have to get that particular mineral. All right, a Taurus is sodium is um is basically is um sulfate, soda phosphate. You know, um that's for a Taurus or sodium phosphate. Um a lack of this basic mineral is basically a person who's overly emotional. Um, uh, excessive if you didn't drink it, they have sore throat a lot, by a large town foods, uh goder. You know, uh, bronchial uh, 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 infection and affliction. You know, probably you know, called the zodiac. Remember, Aries is the head of the zodiac. Taurus is with the throat of the zodiac. So, um, so your sulfate is excellent um, to use for that case, or in those particular cases for Taurus. And of course, you can um, obtain that through eating beets and spinach. Uh, cauliflower, cabbage, cucumbers, and onions, once again, as well as also pumpkin. All right. Now, for a Gemini, they need potassium chlorine or chloride. You know, uh, you know, lack of this mineral will actually affect the blood and circulation. You know, so, I mean, you can actually have problems such as uh, arm and shoulder problems, uh, numbness, Nervousness, brain damage, and fevers, as well as also impure blood and bronchial infections again. You know, because the Gemini is what controls on the zodiac, or the mother zodiac is, controls the lungs, as well as also the arms and the hands. All right? So, um, Gemini is potassium chlorine. Or chloride. All right. Then of course you have cancer, which is um, 
lime fluoride, right? And that mineral is good for the whole flex the veins, the teeth, the eyes, the spleen, the wound, and uh, it helps with corrections of the falling of a falling wound, varicose veins, uh, tooth decay, curvature of the spine, weakness of the eyesight. You know, so um, you can obtain that by eating the cabbage, lettuce, watercress, pumpkin. You know, it's a real good source of lime fluoride, all right, for cancer. Then you have Leo, in which that is magnesium phosphate. Magnesium phosphate, in which that, of course, Leo um, controls the um, heart, all right. Um, cancer, which we just mentioned, controls the um, diaphragm, all right. Now, Leo deals with the heart. Now, so any um, problems, you know, lack of this mineral, which is magnesium phosphate, is heart afflictions, convulsions, fever, jaundice, um, sore eyes, and cramps, and et cetera. You know, um, it can be obtained basically by eating a rye, boiling, um, Almond, figs, um, cabbage, coconuts, walnuts, blueberries. Okay? Now, remember, dandelion has all 12 of these. But I have to give you the other foods in which that also, these um, minerals are also the same. Next, you have the Virgo, in which that um, deals with um, tiger and soft things. In which that lack of memory reports, hair loss, scalp condition, um, liver problems, clogged, you know, clogging up the skin pores, you know, so basically it helps with um, intestinal worms, nervous disorders, um, appendicitis, and it's real good if you get it from eating um, most vegetables, you know, carrots, oats, you know, um, rye. All right, and we have the next one, which deals with um, Libra, in which that, of course, deals with the kidneys. Libra deals with the kidneys, and, you know, Libra is actually sodium phosphate. And sodium phosphate helps um, expel um, carbon, you know, acid from the lungs and the bladder and the skin. It helps relieve um, worry and jealousy and fear. And um, it's good for kidneys and the bladder condition. Now, it can be obtained from eating celery, carrots, um, beets, astragalus, uh, yellow corn, strawberries. Blueberries, raisins, almonds, coconuts, oatmeal, um, apples, etc. All right, then you have Scorpio, which is lime sulfate, and a missing mineral in that is the disease of genital organs, ruptures, cows, which is like um, basically hemorrhoids, urinary um, problems. Problems in the bladder and the food things that you can eat in order to help that is onions, kale, garlic, wheat crust, turnips, coconuts, cauliflower, leeks, radishes, black cherries, gooseberries, blueberries, figs, prunes, etc. Then you, of course, you have Sagittarius, which deals with silica. All right, and silica um, helps is the mineral in which that dull hair. Weak nails, poor skin, you know, which that, um, you know, can come through. Um, some of the other problems, complaints of this lack of mineral is basically uh, rheumatism, arthritis, overheating in the blood, and all uh, with the fevers. Um, the fruits, all fruits and vegetables, right? In particular, figs, prunes, and strawberries. Then you have Capricorn, in which that is lime phosphate. In which that um, this mineral, you know, with the missing mineral causes the big bones, you know, stones, voids, temples, 
in wax, you know, uh, deafness, etc. You know, complaints of on this lack of this mineral basically is on skin diseases and uh, weak wounds, you know, brick bones, um, you know, corns and warts, etc. You know, so um, definitely want to um, intake that. And basically, by eating figs, strawberries, plums, uh, blueberries, almonds, um, you know, coconuts, and the spinach. Again, lettuce, you know, in particular, purple lettuce um, is the best kettle. And then, of course, you have um, Aquarius, which is sodium chloride, all right? And um, down with the membrane, complaints of this um, mineral, um, this cramps in the leg, on its own. Um, fevers, bad blood, being paralyzed. All right, so sodium chloride um, is from, you can get obtained just little root eating strawberries, basically, uh, cucumbers, chestnuts, coconuts, um, cabbage, um, spinach, figs, apples, lettuce, radishes, etc. And then the last one is Pisces, in which that is iron phosphate. All right, in which that a lack of this mineral causes coughing, colds, um, chills, fevers, pneumonia, you know, various glandular problems, you know, and it's real good for the bunions and gout, and for the gout, and boils, and uh, abscesses, you know, colds, et cetera, you know, uh, Either lentils and cabbage, onions, barley, uh, red potatoes, such as red potatoes, uh, uh, cucumbers, walnuts, almonds, uh, lima beans, and apples, pumpkins, and lettuce. That's really good uh, for that. All right, so once again, we'll say that the science of the herbal healing can all be found on what we just finished talking about, the 12 nutritive blood salts, tissue salts, muscle salts, can be found in dandelion. Dandelion has all 12 of these, but if there's something that is missing, you can actually go to um, Vitamin Shop or GNC and get a homeopathic product, but a homeopathic in which that has each one of these 12 listed. So that um, as a, um, as you use the homeo um, product, homeopathic product, um, it can help to heal particularly um, the elements in which that is afflicting you, as which that we just finished talking about. But if you don't know what it is, then just take dandelion and it will help with all 12. Remember, dandelion is excellent. It clears, um, cleanses the liver, the spleen, the pancreas, the kidneys. All right, so it's essential for... Um, the glands, the lower glands in particular. All right. Now, also another good herb, in order that's good for digestion. Let's talk about digestion. Also, um, is fenugreek, fenugreek, um, and comfrey can actually be used together in order to draw, to drive out basically mucus from the body and heal the mucous membranes and eliminate infection. All right? That's what it does. Uh, it also helps with going to increase the oxygen to the lung. All right? You can also add mullein and comfrey and fenugreek together, too. Mullein is actually for the earth, um, for the um, lungs. Mullein is good um, when it comes to um, cleansing out the lungs, so bronchial, asthma, uh, if it's in the, any problems dealing with the lungs, mullein is definitely the herb to take. And you can take it also in conjunction with comfrey and fenugreek. All right? So, that's also necessary in order to uh, do it. Now, we also um, spoke about the fact of some other herbs in which that um, 
when we need to speak about the fact that some other herbs in which that also helps with the um, healing of the body. Like, for example, when I, of course, y'all, I can't get to all of the herbs, but there's so many of them, you know. Um, but you know that um, the aloe vera has been mentioned within the, bi- within the Bible many of times. And for thousands of years, you know, people in the tropical climate you know, or et cetera, um, extract the resins from the um, aloe vera plant and use it, you know, to promote healing, you know, whether it's digestive, you know, with the constipation or pain or either with um, skin ailments, you know. So um, that is excellent to use when we did bring up the fact of aloe um, vera, all right. Um, also, some other good herbs, which I didn't get a chance to mention, is um echinacea. Echinacea is excellent um herb. Um basically it's like the um echinacea is like one of the kings of the blood purifiers. It's clean, basically cleans the system. Um the Native Americans actually use echinacea in order to heal a many and a variety of diseases. Um echinacea was excellent in conjunction with chaparral in order to help cure AIDS. All right. Um is a Antibiotic also, a natural antibiotic, a blood builder and a blood purifier. All right, it helps with infections. It also helps with the lymph gland, with the um, lymphatic system or the gland. It really helps with prostate problems, venereal diseases, and etc. All right, so the other mention, um, echinacea also specifically, and like we said, it works in conjunction excellently with chaparral. All right, it was also red clover and, and um, and yellow dock. All right. Um, another one is basically ginger. Ginger is real good uh, for the circulation. Um, it helps with the kidneys. Um, if you're nauseated or if you get car sick, emotion sick, on a boat, make sure you have some ginger. It's also good for eliminating gas, um, sinuses, stomach spasms, fevers, colds, etc. So ginger is also another nice herb in order to utilize. All right? Now, I'm not going to be able to take questions tonight. You know, um, well, we might be able to because we have some technical difficulties, but um, let me see what we can do here. Um, another herb in which that is real excellent is um, licorice, in which that I didn't get a chance to talk about. Licorice is real good. You know, and, um, you know, and we talk about not the fake licorice, you know, in which that um, they have within the candy nowadays, but we're talking about real licorice. And um, real licorice basically um, is the licorice in which that, the taste actually tastes like the um, black licorice, and which most people don't like the black licorice, you know, because of it, because of the taste. But licorice is excellent um, in order to be used, you know. It's excellent to be used. There's a um, natural hormone, you know, that can um, um, help with um, harmonial balance of the females in particular too. All right, it stimulates the adrenal glands and helps the body to maintain normal um, blood sugar levels. All right, so um, it's real excellent, real excellent. All right. Now, there's some other herbs that we said is real good, which um, you can talk about. I'm trying to think. I think part of Yapo is one I didn't talk about. Get a chance to talk about as of yet. Padiaco is um, also called Tahibo, all right? Um, it actually attacks the causes of diseases, all right? It puts the body into a defense um, position, and it gives the body energy that it needs, you know, to defend itself. So, I mean, it improves the function of the immune system. Cayenne pepper and cardiaco, 
all right, works excellent together, all right. Um, Padiak was also one of the antibiotics um, of the herbal kingdom in that regard, all right. It helps with um, leukemia, leukemia um, skin diseases, right? venereal diseases, diabetes, lupus, um, bronchitis, asthma, um, anemia, cancer, ulcers, etc. All right. Now, when we talk about these particular herbs, one of the best herbs in which that you use um, for pain. All right. If you have any pain, whether it's toothache or whatever, um, Valium is made for valerian root. Valerian root is excellent. Valerian root is one of the best nerve tonics. It helps soothe the pain and promote sleep. All right, so it's good for um, nervousness and convulsions and fatigue and high blood pressure, etc. Valerian root um, helps, you know, helps settle your mood. Um, in conjunction with St. John wort. All right, so if a person is de- um, is depressed, you know, or you know, whatever the case is, it helps um, make you feel good, all right, in that regard, all right? Now, um, I'm trying to think. We've been over the basic herbs that, that I have used or have prescribed for um, others, I think what else would be real good. Now, let's go over some um, ailments. For example, let's like for example, um, adrenal um, glands. When your um, adrenal glands ex- um, excrete too much adrenaline, it, it becomes exhausted. Licorice can be used in order to help with that. Okay. Um, as we were saying with AIDS, we were talking about um, Pardiaco and red clover, um, echinacea, that can be used um, as a blend for that. All right, um, allergies, um, alfalfa, bee pollen, ginger, vitamin C can be added. Right, make sure it's vitamin C in which that um, comes from rose hips, rose hips, all right? Um, then arthritis, arthritis, um, alfalfa, and red, um, cayenne pepper, you know, um, chaparral is excellent. For back pains, you know, um, uva from Ushi, or Ushi is real good for that, all right? Um, asthma, bronchitis, um, you said mullen, you used to come Comfrey, fenugreek, even bee pollen, alfalfa, um, cardiaco, soil pimento, as well as red pepper once again. Right, bladder problems, dandelion, soil pimento, um, uva, all right? Um, blood pressure, hawthornberry. That's another herb that we can get a chance to talk about, but hawthornberry in conjunction with red pepper, which is cayenne pepper and garlic. Is excellent for the um, blood pressure and the heart. All right, it knocks out high blood pressure. Um, blood purifier, um, like we said, the blood purifying herbs. You can do comfrey, finger Greek, alfalfa, um, burdock, chaparral, chickweed, dandelion, echinacea, red clover, yellow dock, even don quai. Um, can be used for the women as far as that's concerned too. Um, to increase breast milk flow, if you have problems with that, um, ladies or sisters, um, goddesses, um, black walnuts will help with that. The breast milk period would be red raspberry and um, damiana. All right, if you want to increase the size of the breast, then that would be supplemental. All right. All right. Um, we have some questions here. We'll go and um. Area code 843, you're on the line. Greetings, Brother Bay. How you doing today? Greetings, greetings. How you are? All right. Maintaining. 
I wanted to ask you um, for warts and uh, fungal infection. Right. Yeah, what well, what you what, say? Um, burdock. Burdock is one of the most powerful um blood purifiers in our particular for um skin diseases, burdock. Um also um yellow dock, as you may mention of earlier, and chapel rail. Okay, 'cause um she went to a skin doctor and he was getting ready to prescribe some medicine but she was uh pregnant at the time. Right. And I uh, I knew when she was younger she had warts on her fingers, but now she's getting like um black spots on her face, so I figured that if she doing so all the system now. Right. Well she had to clear out her digestive system first and which that that's what we recommended with senior Greek along with um Casagara or Senna, you know, or Aloferox. She had to clean out her, she had to clean out her digestive first to eliminate the um the toxins and the poison that is built up within her system in which that it takes the load off the liver. So then after the cleansing of the digestive system, cleanse the liver also, in which that you would take, uh, for the liver, you would take chickweed, um, alfalfa, as well as dandelion. Mm. All right? Okay. So once the liver is um, detoxified, the digestive system is clear, then those skin problems and those types of things should disappear. Now, the herbs in order to use for the skin, whether it's internally or externally, burdock would definitely be number one. Okay. I mean, that's interesting because um, when uh, she was breastfeeding, uh, one of those wet nurses told her, uh, I think it was fenugreek and uh, burdock are good uh, things to take to help keep her lactating, you know, making milk. Right. Exactly. And also, um, what's good for warts too is um black walnut and chaparral as I was saying earlier. Chaparral is is one of the um most powerful antibiotics in the herbal kingdom. All right. I mean it's so bitter. I mean there's there's, there's only there's there's like four most bitter herbs that you can take, probably in the United States. And that's yellow dock. That's chaparral, golden seal, um, wormwood is definitely another one, and um, Casagara. All right, so actually about five. They, they are real bitter herbs, and these bitter herbs have the tendency of being able to um, eliminate um, skin infections and things like that because they're antibiotics, natural antibiotics. How, how do you spell it, Casagara? Um, it's, let me see. It's C A. The A S. Let me see. Yeah, let me make sure. It's C A S. C A R A. Casagal. So C A S C A R A. Okay. I've never heard of that one. It's it's easy to get here in the states. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Matter of fact, you can go to. Um, you can order it from us. In which that we have, um, we do have an herbal store. Um, so therefore, you can order it from us. Um, it is five dollars an ounce. Um, you can contact us at two five two, two five seven, three five eight eight. That's two five two, two five seven, three five eight eight. So any of these herbs that you heard us speak about tonight, we have also, because I'm also a master herbalist, uh, certified and degree. As herbalists, so um, these are things that we have learned over the last twenty twenty five years. You know, mm-hmm. sitting under um, different masters and different teachers. Okay, that's peace. And where are you located? Oh, we located in North Carolina. Okay. Okay, that's great. Two five two, two five seven. Two five seven. Three five eight eight. Okay, and one more question, if I may. Uh, yeah. w- what herbs or what's good to strengthen uh, the lower spine, the back? All right, that was Uva, U V A, U R S I. Uva Ursi. Right, Uva Ursi. That is one of the best for the back pain. 
strength in the back, as well as also Irish sea moss. Irish sea moss. M O S S. Irish. I R I S H. Irish C S E A moss. M O S S. Yeah, I tell you, brother, when I, I used to live up top, up in New York, and you know, uh, you know, there's a few Caribbean places that made uh, mixed drinks, you know, roots drinks and all of that stuff. Right, exactly. Yeah, it was very accessible up there, but it's really hard to find here in the South. Yeah, where you at? I'm in uh, South Carolina. So okay. okay. Well, just call us and we got it. All right, that's peace. I'll definitely do that. Okay. I, I appreciate you, brother Bay. All right, appreciate you. Thank you for calling. Peace. Peace. Area code three two one. You're on the line. How you doing? Peace. How you doing, brother? Peace. All right, don't bow. Wow. I'm good. Yes. Uh, do you have anything that's good, like the pioneers or anything like any herbs? For, for say it again. The pioneer land. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, the herbs for the pineal gland is, like we said earlier, the brain foods, which is ginkgo, olava, guatacola, ginseng. Matter of fact, together they're called the triple G's. Wow. They help. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Definitely. You say you need those yes. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm saying definitely. Yeah, yeah so how, how would I... I would have to contact you, right? Right, just contact me. Okay. I could... Your, your number is on your website, Cultural uh, Dash Reader, right? Yep. It's well, also... Um, I just gave it. It's 252-257-3588. That's 252-257-3588. Yeah, okay, definitely, yeah. Because I've been trying to okay. purchase some things for that. Okay, okay. No what, about, what, what about chakras and stuff like that? You say who now? What about the chakras? Oh, for the chakras. Well, those are the endocrine glands. Remember, I was going over the endocrine glands. I was talking about, so we just did the pineal gland and the, and the particular um, glands in the brain, ginkgo, the lava, um, guatacola, and ginseng. Then we went to the thyroid gland and parathyroid gland, which we was talking about kelp, corella, spirulina, iris sea moss, dus, D-U-L-S-E, a dus, all right? Um, as well as, that's the thyroid gland. Then we go to the thymus gland. The thymus gland, which is the lymphatic system or your defense system or your immune system, as it is called, all right? On the earth for that is alfalfa. Okay? Alfalfa is really a dandelion. Mm-hmm. Then we go to um, the, um, the pancreas and the spleen. Dandelion is actually for the pancreas and the spleen as well as also the adrenal glands and the kidneys, which, sits on, which the adrenal gland sits on top of the kidneys. So dandelion is excellent for that as well as chickweed. Right. Then wow. you have the genet- then you have the genitalia. The genitalia for the men would be sorplemento, horny goat weed, um, a little bit of yohimbi, um, sorplemento, um, picium, you know, uh, ginseng once again, um, Siberian ginseng, or either um, um Korean, red Korean um ginseng. Um then you have um, for the woman for the uterus um, strength in the uterus is Don Kwai, uh, Damiana, you know, red raspberry. You know, so those are the better herbs right there. So those are, that's your chakra system is your endocrine gland system. If your endocrine glands are not functioning properly, harmonially, which means that they have to be a harmonial balance, then your chakra system is out of whack. Okay? Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Thank uh, you. We'll go to the. No, you're welcome. Next question. Five six one eight. 
Oh, 561, excuse me, you're on the line. Peace, God. How you doing, bro? God, how you doing? I'm good. Better pray. Yes, sir. Thank you, bro. Yes, I was wondering, uh, what do you got for, like, uh, you know, like, when you get the yellowish kind of looking eye, I don't know if it's high cholesterol, the liver need cleaning. Do you have any yes, idea? Liver, right. It's jaundice, right, that's jaundice, so the liver. Um, the liver need to be detoxified. Um, we spoke earlier that the liver has over 500 functions in the body. You take the R or the letter R off the liver, you have the word lens. So it's one of yes. the major organs in the body. So you need to detoxify it, and the herbs you use is dandelion and milk thistle. Dandelion, yes, sir. Dandelion and milk thistle. Lip thistle? Milk thistle. P-H-I-S-T-L-E, milk thistle. Okay, yes, sir. I got that. Thank you, bro. Right. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. You asking any other questions, or are you just on oh, yeah. only prayer tonight? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yes. What question? <laughs> yes, sir. I got a good question, bro. You know, I uh, uh, went in. I, my last name is uh, Muhammad, but I also mm-hmm. got a, went into the um, temple that got L. But mm-hmm. I was told that um, I should get rid of the Muhammad from the temple. So, is is that a, a big time stipulation with that? I mean, or no, is that some? No, it's not. No, it isn't. It isn't. Um, you can um hyphen Muhammad on um, the L to Muhammad. As your last name, um, that's up to you. That's that's if you choose to do so. That's the way that the temple does it. Or either you either have to use the hyphen, and it's just Muhammad L. You know, so there's yeah. no problem with that. Okay, no I see. Uh, yeah, I, I was right, kind of like scrutinized right. for that. Right. Well, the Pardon reason me? why is because um, it comes from a different organization, the Muhammad. But I mean, come on, that's like you trying to say that an Orthodox Muslim. Who didn't go through the nation of Islam? Who got Muhammad? Can't utilize their Muhammad name, and they had nothing to do with the nation of Islam and Master for Muhammad. Right. Or Elijah yes, Muhammad, sir. you know. So, um, no. In that regard, I mean, we gotta we gotta be able to use our minds and and think. And the point is, is that no, you can use any name in which that helps with the unification and the tying back to land, which is your nationality. Um, so, right. You know, Symbolizes that Muhammad symbolizes um, actually metaphysically the crown shock. Mm. Yes, sir. This is why Muhammad was able to journey on the night of Mirage into the seven heavens. Mm. Because yes, sir. He, got face, he was able to see God face to face in the seventh in the um, seventh heaven. Mm. You know, over towards the first heaven, he was able to see God face to face in the seventh heaven. So mm. that regard shows that Muhammad um, is able to see God. You know, same as in the Old Testament where you have um, Adam who was able to talk and see God, or Moses who was able to um, talk with God, but yet see the burning bush. You know, mm. so I mean, um, Muhammad, according to the Hadith, he was able to see God face to face and talk with God. As a matter of fact, the conversation went: How many times um, should we make the humans pray? He said, 100, oh, no. Muhammad said, oh, you ain't going to get them niggas to do that. Then 50, oh, no, you ain't going to get them to do that. Well, what about 10? Oh, no, I think it's a little bit too much, too. But what about 5? Right. Why? You might be able to get them to do that. <laughs> wow. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Right. Right. So all of that is based on the hadith, which is the words of men. And, you know, you don't have to, I mean, you did what you did. If you like it, love it, continue with it. Don't let anyone tell you differently because it's all based on, um, trying to separate and trying to act as if someone has all the answers. And what I'm seeing is that uh, I've seen a lot of rhetoric and talk and doctors and dogma, but I'm not seeing no actual application of the knowledge because no one is only half the battle. The other half is application. With the application, application for that, I don't, yes, I'm not sir. seeing the application from these organizations, whether it's a war yes, or whether it's the NOI or whether it's the Black Panther Party or whatever. The, the, um, the application has to come. Um, you know, sometime or another, and so that's what we need to be working on is the application part aspect instead of worrying about um, a brother with the name Muhammad. Yes, sir, I agree with you, man, one hundred percent. Thank you. No <laughs> Thank no you. Way. I really appreciate that, God. Yes, so, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Peace. Right. Well, what we was talking about, there's a question in the chat. We're talking about bee pollen, and we 
spoke on bee pollen as being definitely one of the herbs in order to utilize. Bee pollen in particular is good for allergies. Now, um, we have to be careful with the bee pollen nowadays because, like we said, Monsanto has a terminator seed in which that when the wind blows from these terminator seeds, um, it gets on organic crops. Um, then those organic crops become hybrid. So the best thing is to have a glass house, all right, or, um, or some type of building structure in which that you grow your herbs in and which that the sunlight can actually shine through in order to help with the growth of the plant. And this way you know that they're organic and that um, – and also um, allow the door or some type of door to be open so that bees can get in and pollinate, all right? Um, that's the pollination which that is needed, all right, from the bees. Now, if you notice here lately, the bees have been dying off massively, actually for the last 20 some odd years. All right, the bees have been dying. So um, every few years the bees come back or try to come back. But I think it's because of the chemtrails. I think it's because of the so much toxins in the environment that the bee population is dying off. Of course, others have some, you know, some other metaphysical things to say or whatever the case is, but um, I think it's more so from that. So bee pollen is excellent. Um, as a matter of fact, it's one of the superfoods, as we were saying earlier. It helps with circulation, helps with your blood purification, it helps with your digestive system, it helps with your allergies, your nasal, your lungs, it strengthens your lungs, um, it helps with all of your um, bodily system. That's, that's ranging from your lymphatic system, your circulatory system, your digestive system, um, your nervous system, all of these things are helped by bee pollen because it has high amounts of vitamin B, B complex. All right? Vitamin B complex is excellent and it's good for energy source. So um, if you need energy, alfalfa and, and um, bee pollen is excellent for energy and endurance level. All right? So that's the science behind bee pollen. Next, area code 334 on the line. Peace, God. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Begin. You loud and clear. Peace. Peace. This is the uh, Sabravi Equality calling from Alabama, man. Uh, I had a question, but it's kind of off topic. I was just tuning in about 10 minutes ago, but is it all right if I ask a question a little off the topic? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Well, my question was, like, dealing with the chakras, like, it, this is what's going on. It's like a particular person, every time I get ready to uh, maybe go see this person or something like that, like, I get this really weird feeling. And I want to say, like, you know, in my solar plexus, it's almost, I guess, what you would call, like, butterflies or something like that. But it's not like when you was young and you get a, it's like a good feeling. It's kind of just a, a strange presence that I get. You know what I'm saying? To the point sometimes right. I even just have to sit down for a minute and regroup. You know what I'm saying? And right. so I'm trying to figure out, is it that I, the energy that I have, you know, me and this person's energy don't mix or... Is it trying to tell me stay away from that person, or do I need to pull near to that person, you know? All right, well, this this is the key. Um, your solar plexus symbolizes your power or your will. Your will is actually um, springs forth from your solar plexus. Now, and wait, now, because let me stop. Let me stop you real quick, because I might have said the wrong one. Right around my navel area, that not that the solar plexus is above that, right? Right. All right. So, right so I'm, so I'm dealing shot. with yeah. I'm dealing with that one. Yeah. Well, my navel okay. chakra. All right. That's nurturing. That's dealing with nurturing. Now, your navel chakra deals with the nurturing, so the color orange. So, if you want to help with that, start eating orange foods, such as oranges, carrots, you know, so forth and so on. Even though carrot is a hybrid of the parsnip and the, um yam, it's still beneficial. All right. Okay. Um. Some some um, hybrids are natural hybrids, and some are man-made. Um, natural hybrids is, is can still be utilized in order to heal the body. Now, in yeah. this regard, orange foods would be something that you would definitely want to begin to start eating more of, you know, for several weeks and see how you feel in that regard. Now, also, rub your hands together like Mr. Miyagi, and you will feel the chi or the key or prana energy from your hands. Take your hands and place them over your navel chakra. And what you would do is take your right hand 
and put your left hand on top of your right hand at your navel chakra and leave it there for about 20 minutes and begin to um, allow the chi energy to flow into your navel chakra in order to heal that particular area. Okay. Okay? And that right. way you can see the next time that that issue get brought up, if there's anything dealing with um, nurturing aspect, um, because um, is, is this a female that, you, that, that, that you're yeah. talking about here? Yes, yeah, a female. Okay, well, that would be because of the nurturing factor, as we were just talking about. So um, you can see um, from that regard, if it's something in which that is positive and negative, if it happens around um, the person, and do what I'm telling you to do with the um, healing and see how you feel afterwards. Okay. Maybe it just have to be um, a balance of energy between the two, that's all. Okay, all right. That was my question. I appreciate it, man. All right. Peace. Peace. Area code 404. 404, you're on the line. Peace and blessings, brother. Your brother, the um, Lord. How you feel? All right, all right. How you doing? Good. I just want to let y'all know I'm keeping tab on trying to listen to the knowledge. All right. Appreciate that. Good one, brother. Well, I'm glad to hear from you. Hello, Queen. I say hello, and I'll be talking to you all soon, and keep me in your prayers. Oh, yeah, you're always in the prayers now. That That's not going to um, change now. I mean, that's some positive affirmation that we have to um, throw at you in order to um, make sure that you're all right. Okay, brother. I've just, you know, I've been sitting here listening. I didn't get a chance to get in last week, but I thought I'd just say hello and peace to the gods and goddess. All right. Appreciate you, Wap. Peace, brother. Mm-hmm. Area code 540, you're on the line. Hello, peace. Hey. Hello. Yo, I got a question yeah. about um, I'm looking for powerful herbs to uh, aid in uh, broken bones in the back healing. Right. Comfrey is definitely um, one of the ones that you want. Comfrey, I receive right. most. Can you greet? Um, What's the last one? Root. Right, those herbs heal um, um, the bones. Marshmallow, marshmallow root. root. Yeah, marshmallow root. Right, comfrey, irisy moss. Finu Greek. Mars- What's the Greek one you said? Finu Greek, F-E-N-U-G-R-E-E-K, Finu Greek. Finu Greek, marshmallow root, sea moss, Irish, and what's the other one? Right. And comfort. Right. Comfort. Uh, appreciate it, brother. Yep. Oh, you're welcome, brother. Area code 267, you're on the air. Peace and blessings, Brother Halim Day. Blessings, brother. All right, brother. How you doing again? All right. I called last week. This is Brother Gary Cone from Philadelphia. Uh, All right. I want to brother greet Gary. you on a, a great show, another great show tonight. Oh, appreciate that. We're trying to do our best. Okay, I got a question though. Uh, have you have any uh, info on the herb moringa? Yes, yeah. moringa, of course, is an African um, herb, which that is very powerful, um, in, especially in conjunction with noni and gooseberry um, and um, um, ake. You know, these these are powerful herbs together. Real lot a lot of antioxidant, you know, which that destroys free radicals. You know, um moringa itself is real excellent, you know, when it comes to toning the whole system, the whole body, in particular all your um systems such as like we said, your circulatory system, your um lymphatic system, digestive system, your nervous system, etc. You know, all nine systems is um real powerful um, um with this and can become real powerful with moringa so it's definitely an herb in order to use. Okay, and uh one other question, um with the muscular system would B pollen be excellent for that also? The yes, circulation B pollen and alfalfa. Okay. Great, great. Right. Well keep up the good work, brother. You're doing very well. I am enjoying all the information. Uh All right, brother. Oh, 
All right. All right. Um, right now, do I have any more questions? Let me see here. All right, anything in the chat room? All right. Um, there's no questions right now, but what we're going to continue doing is um, finish talking about um, the science of herbs. And there's a lot of um, herbs that we didn't get a chance to mention, you know. Um, however, um, we did mention quite a bit, you know, in which that would be very helpful in order to help eliminate um, basically, basically any ailment that you might have. And it's a necessity that you um, master these herbs, especially sightseeing herbs. You have to learn how to um, see these herbs in sight and um, know these herbs by sight. You know, um, you know, I recommend some type of um, book, you know, or YouTube, you know, or some type of um, natural trail in which you can go on in order to learn the science of herbs, and be able to identify them, all right? It might come a time where that becomes a necessity. And for um, these particular groups that's talking about survival, if you don't know herbal strategy or herbal remedies, you know, as a strategy, then um, you're not about the science of um, preservation. You're not about the science of survival. You're fooling yourself. You know, you think that you're just going to be able to get a gun and go and do whatever you need to do, you're fooling yourself. If you don't know the science of healing along with killing, then you have fixed yourself out. And this is one of the problems in which that we're seeing in the community is that many speak about um, the gun, but with the herbology, you know, because this thing has to be holistic. It's about holistic teachings here. So not only do you have to know the science of Denmark, you also need to know the science of Tai Chi, Qigong, you know. And this is the thing in which that um, you have to know, acupressure, acupuncture, reflexology, iosology, all right? These things become essential when it comes when we talk about the science of healing. It's essential. All right? Um, so um, we get ready to um, check you all out. I'm glad that you all got all, um, came on and listened. Take this out for another show. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value with natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value with natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intentions straight out. All right.
right? So, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages or to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're gonna take this level up a notch. We're gonna have stuff to do here. This is not just gonna be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs> 